All right. Good morning, everyone. Welcome. We're going to go ahead and get started. If everyone will please rise for the posting of the colors and remain standing for the invocation. Thank you. Cadet, post. Cadet, sidestep, mark. Chaplain Bill Stickles will now deliver the invocation.
Thank you, and thank you for inviting me here today. And I wanted to tell all the fine young men and women here today that are graduating that my father always told me that as we grow, uh, to keep growing and keep learning and keep experiencing, because as long as you're learning, you're still growing, and to keep doing that throughout your life. So this is just the beginning. In Psalms 127, verse 1, it says, Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh in vain. As officers, you may feel that you have completed your journey, but your journey has just begun. You have many years and many things ahead of you, and whatever you do and wherever you go, do it to the best of your ability. I think one of the most important things to do is to maintain your integrity throughout your life. And I wanted to read one verse from Proverbs 10, verse 9. It says, people with integrity walk safely, but those who follow crooked paths will slip. A verse that I use with the inmates, but I think is also very appropriate for everyone at the detention centers from Jeremiah 29, 7. And it says, and seek the peace of the city, whether I have caused you to be carried away captive and to pray unto the Lord for it, for in its peace, you will have peace. And I try to remind the people there that that is what the Lord would like. Shall we go to the Lord in prayer? Dear Lord, I thank you for each and every one of these fine young men and women, and I ask you to watch over and to bless their lives and preserve their lives and help them to live their lives with integrity and watching over them, uh, to guide them, and may everything that they do be uh, a representation of the work that they're doing and, and do it to the best of their abilities and the best of their training. For this we pray in your precious son's name. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain. Please be seated. Cadets, please be seated. Again, thank you everyone for being here and welcome to the first ceremony of the first graduating class of 2019. I'd like to extend a special welcome to our special guest, and I'll start over here on my right. We have Commissioner Red Reynolds, Judge Madrid, Assistant County Manager Vince Bacluda, who is also overseeing the detention center um, in the interim for us, and our captains, our chaplains, and our lieutenants. And I also know that Judge Linda Flores is with us today, so thank you everyone. Before I introduce our guest speaker, I would also like to acknowledge that um, you probably see in your brochures, your programs rather, that we were graduating and also heard that we were graduating 10 cadets. And 10 cadets will be graduating, but we only have nine with us today. Um, during the ceremonies, I like to acknowledge those who have served our military and served our country. And that is what Cadet Orlando Carbajal is doing today. He is fulfilling his military obligations. So on behalf of his serving the country, I'd also like to um, applause applaud for him, for him as well as those of you in the audience who have served our country. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for serving. Our first, or our only actually guest speaker is Commissioner Shannon Reynolds. Shannon, Shannon Reynolds is a Doniana County Commissioner for District 3. He took office on January 1st, 2019, and will be eligible to seek re-election in 2022. Commissioner Reynolds also served on the Milford, Ohio City Council from 2004 to mid-2006. Commissioner Reynolds was born in Lexington, Kentucky, and currently resides in Las Cruces. He has lived in seven different states over the past 40 years, and is a former Vietnam-era veteran of the United States Air Force. 
Thank you for your service. While in the service, Commissioner Reynolds was trained to augment the MPs in case of an emergency, and he is a marksman with both an M16 and 38 pistol. Commissioner Reynolds is married to Maggie Campbell Reynolds, and they have three children, three grandchildren, and three great-grandchildren. Commissioner Reynolds attended New Mexico State University from 1989 to 1990 and studied mechanical engineering technology. He was a graduate of the class of 1982 from the University of Illinois in Champaign, Illinois, having studied physics, math, and general engineering. He attended Parkland College in Champaign, Illinois as well and graduated in the class of 1979 where he studied physics, psychology, and mechanical engineering. He was a student exchange coordinator at the Cincinnati Public Schools and has taught three classes at the Doniana Community College Workforce Center. He was a former business analyst, team manager, and technical skills coach for Dell EMC, where he worked for 12 years. Commissioner Reynolds is a certified public official of New Mexico at the New Mexico Edge from August 15, 2017 to present. He is also a mentor with the Las Cruces program, Las Cruces SCORE program since January 2016. He is also affiliated with the Downtown Las Cruces Partnership, serving as its executive secretary from April 26, Second, sorry, 2017 to the present. He's quite a busy man. Ladies and gentlemen, Commissioner Shannon Reynolds. Good morning. Um, first thing I want to say is I think that it's really great to have all the families here to support these young men and women. Um, they spent six weeks training and uh, I can tell you, as a member of the armed services, that their boot camp, I'm sure, is very much like the boot camp that I went to in the Air Force. Um, so I'm sure they're challenged physically, mentally, and uh, they've learned a lot. Has anybody not learned something this last six weeks? You know? And I think uh, we should be, we, I want, I'm glad all of you here are, very, are here and very proud of them. Some of the things that, uh, as uh, Stephanie mentioned, I'm a, I am a great-grandfather. I did spend four years in the Air Force. I um, worked for 40 years. My first job was at 14, uh, doing construction for my grandfather. Uh, back in Kentucky, we grow tobacco, so I, did to I hung tobacco and harvested tobacco in high school. And I learned a lot from my grandfather and from those ex early experiences in my life. Um, the things I learned is I learned that there's no job that's uh, insignificant. There's no person doing a job that's insignificant. And it's important that we recognize that everyone has value and value in what they do. Some of the other things I learned in my life is that you can, if you look back over your life, you can always measure your happiness by the number of choices you have when you were a child and you were punished for doing something wrong and you were asked to sit in the corner or you were told to stay in your room or you weren't allowed to go see your friends, you weren't very happy. But as you got older and you became an adult where you could start to make your own decisions, then the more options you had to make a decision, the happier you became. I think it's important for these young people here just starting in their career as detention um, officers to think about the fact that the people they're watching really have very few choices. Now, the result of that is that people you're going to be taking care of in, all, in almost your entire time in your job, they're not going to be very happy people, so you shouldn't expect them to be that. But you shouldn't take that personal. You should understand in most cases that they're there by their own choice, by the choices they made. And your responsibility is to simply keep them safe, keep everyone else safe, and allow them the opportunity to uh, rehabilitate and get out as soon as possible. The thing we, we, we find that we usually do in situations like this when we have an oversight of someone else who has very few choices and is very angry, we tend to go the wrong way. And we tend to think that it's our responsibility to manage and control them. 
But I think in doing that, we have to not forget the fact that we have to maintain our, human our humanity in those situations and realize and try to recognize the choices they don't have, the limitations they have, and the fact that you're not really there to make it worse for them. You're, they're there just to protect them and yourself and everyone else. I don't know if they told you that in your training, but the biggest challenge you're going to have is losing your humanity in the process of managing other humans. And so I challenge you to think about that each day before you go and to remember that, you know, you're, you, you want to try and make them as, as well as healthy and as protected and as cared about as possible, but also understand that they have a, pay, a, a price to pay for their choices. But don't be angry because they're angry. You want to be a reflection of them that makes them more calm. The calmer they are, the less angry they're going to be. So don't, don't try, try to avoid conflict as much as possible. If they act out, just make sure they don't hurt themselves or anyone else and protect the other people. And in the process, maintain your own humanity in the situation. I think that's my, the best thing I can tell you. And remember, because they don't have choices and you do, that they, you run the risk of becoming a victim of their anger. Don't, don't let that happen either. Okay? And then go home each night, and please don't take your work home to your family. That's another big challenge, is you'll be tempted to take that anger home and try to act on that or try to deal with it. But the main thing is remember that this is still just a job. You have a responsibility while you're there, but when you go home, try to think about your family, your loved ones, and let them know how much you care about them each day because you can only do that once. And don't forget to do that every day. All right? So anyway, um, I am really proud of all of you. I know how hard it is to be where you are. We appreciate your commitment. We appreciate your sacrifice, your willingness to work. And we actually are looking forward to you helping us to make Doniana County a better place for everyone. And we're counting on you to do that. So with that, again, thank you for your service. Thank you for joining us. And thank your families for coming and honoring you in this, in this cause. And uh, welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much, Commissioner Reynolds. At this time, I'd like to invite Sergeant Puente to the podium. Good morning, everybody. I want to tell you guys thank you for being here for your family members, family and friends who are here today. I want to take the time to congratulate this class for you guys working together and working hard during this academy. Um, you guys are just beginning your guys' careers. Um, you guys are still going to go through many steps. Right now, you guys are going to still go over FTO. You guys still have a month of FTO. And I'm proud of you guys for finishing this step. Now I want to present this video that for, to these family members, to all of you guys that you guys have gone through, that what these um, cadets have gone through during their academy. Thank you.
Oh, that was a good one. Yeah. Good job, Sergeant Puente. And now, for the moment we've all been waiting for, it probably seems endless for our cadets, we will now have the oath of office, I say office, sorry, the oath of honor delivered by the Honorable Judge Samantha Madrid. Judge Madrid was born in Las Cruces, New Mexico to one of the founding families of the Mesilla Valley. She obtained her bachelor's degree and law degree from the University of New Mexico. Currently, she is using her education to serve the people of Doniana County as a magistrate judge. Prior to her service as a Doniana County magistrate judge, she served as an attorney in both prosecution and defense work. She also has experience as a private practice attorney, running her own business, and braving the difficulties of a small enterprise. Judge Madrid came from humble means and obtained her first job when she was 14 years old as well. She worked very hard her entire life to pay for and obtain her education. Prior to being an attorney, she also served as a high school teacher in the inner city where she served a student population that was 80% Title I. Her diverse experience and dedication to those less fortunate and her ability to overcome poverty herself has made her a strong advocate for others and a fair and impartial judge to the community of Doniana. Ladies and gentlemen, Judge Samantha Madrid. Um, I would just like to say that I would be remiss not to remind everybody in this room of how brave these cadets are and how difficult this job is and that it's a commitment, and it's a commitment from the family as well to support them. And we have learned recently with our most recent loss in this community that the strongest and the bravest and the happiest and the kindest are sometimes the most vulnerable to the dark soul and the dark times in, of the night, okay? And I just want to remind everybody that these guys are strong and they're brave and they're tough, and we're proud of them but remember that they need your support and they need a place to be vulnerable and they need a place to be able to share their difficulties. It's not an easy job. And I really, really respect the families and the cadets for what they're choosing to do. And thank you for serving our community. All right, if you would please rise. Do you repeat after me? I swear on my honor, I will never betray my badge, my integrity, my character, or the public trust. I will always have the courage to hold myself and others accountable for our actions. I will always uphold the laws Policies and, procedures policies and procedures of my community, my community county, and the, state that I serve. county and the state that I serve. Congratulations. Officers, please be seated. All right, let's congratulate them one more time, our new officers. Um, as the recruiter for the facility, I should mention, um, I go through, or at least hundreds of applicants apply, and that gets dwindled down. I process, I believe, with this class, if I can recall correctly, uh, approximately 150, give or take a few, started the um, initial process of all the steps. As many of you out there uh, are probably aware of all the emails they received from me of uh, all the different tests they had to take and where to be and all these exams. And out of that huge group that started, you are looking at nine out of the 10 that actually made it 
So that in itself is again worthy and deserving of another round of applause. At this time, I'd like to invite, and I shouldn't make mention, fabulous job to our honor guard. Yes, fabulous job, honor guard. And with that, I'm going to invite Lieutenant Ruben Salcido to the podium. Morning, everybody. Again, thank you all for being here today. Um, everybody, captains, Mr. Pocluda, lieutenants, thanks um, for being here in support of the new officers that uh, just took the oath, went from cadets to officers. Good job, guys. Congratulations. Um, I just have a few words um, to share, and then we will move on. Right. These guys, men and women right here, they went through seven weeks, total of seven weeks of academy. They went through... Um, thank you, sir. They went through a pod officer course and they got exposed to working in the pod, dealing with things in there. Then they came back to the academy, five more weeks in the academy. So they worked probably total hours, maybe about 200 total hours of classroom time and pod time. So a lot of death by PowerPoint, Sergeant Puente can probably attest to it. Some of the lieutenants that went up there and helped me also can attest to the death by PowerPoint. Physical training, like you guys saw up on the video, and they went through taser, OC, control force, things like that. So they did a lot of work. I'm sure that they went home super tired and wanting to not come back the next day, but they came back. Good job for that. Now they gotta go into their next phase of training. Their next phase of training is gonna be FTO training. So they're going to be assigned to a FTO officer and everything that we taught them, everything they learned, everything they read, they get to apply it out inside of the detention center and they get to be monitored and watched and evaluated every day by a senior officer. So, good luck guys. I'm sure you guys will do just fine. You did just fine to get through the academy. Don't forget that what we taught you, all the policies you read, everything that you learned, all you're gonna do now is apply it real lifetime. I know you guys can do it. You guys got this, right? One more thing, just to close, um, I want you guys to know we see you guys working every day hard, day in and day out. Not every time is your sergeant or your lieutenant or your captain going to get to see you before you leave for the day and tell you that you did a good job, but know that we know that you're out there working hard and doing a good job. Don't ever forget that, right? Okay. One more time, congratulations. So we're proud of you guys. Okay, as I mentioned earlier, we um, test these guys on all the classroom stuff that they learn, right? So we give them a couple tests and 10 code tests probably like 10 times so they can know their 10 codes, but it's important that they know them. They all scored well above the average of 75, which is the percentage for the academy for them to graduate. They all scored way above 75. Good job on that also, guys. That shows me that they went home, even though they were tired, took the time to study so they knew the material for the next day for the test day. The person with the highest GPA for this academy in Val Victorian is Robert Campos. If you could please come up. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to be here with us. I wanna start this off by thanking all of the sergeants and lieutenants that helped us through this process. It's with your knowledge and experience that you've passed on to us that we've gotten to this point today. I would also especially like to thank all of you, the family and friends. All the support and love you've given us is, what, is one of the main things that kept us inspired and motivated to succeed throughout this academy, and we couldn't have done it without you. To my fellow officers, we have faced some challenging times throughout this past seven weeks. Whether it was the rigorous PT, the seemingly endless PowerPoints, or the burning of a thousand suns on our eyes from the OC spray. <laughs> we fought through it all as one unit. 
While this chapter is coming to a close, just know this, that a brand new one is just beginning. The road ahead of us will not be easy. This career is not for the faint of heart. However, I believe through all the ups and downs that are to come, we will stand tall and unwavering just as true Spartans do. This concludes my speech. Thank you once again, ladies and gentlemen, for being here. God bless you all. Uh, at this time, I would like to present uh, our training sergeant, Sergeant Puente, and our training lieutenant, Lieutenant Salcido, with a plaque of appreciation for their dedication and hard work for this, to this academy. Sergeant put up here. I also, so you guys know, there was another sergeant that I do have assigned to me, Sergeant Bilio. He wasn't able to make it here today, but he did help out also with these guys in the academy, helped out Puente with some teaching and stuff like that, but he wasn't unable to be here today, but he's normally here. Um, so we're going to move on. We're going to present the certificates of completion for the officers here. If you would like to take pictures, please feel free to come up into the middle aisle. Just don't come up too far because they're going to kind of walk around this way and make it make their way back to their seats. But you are able to come up and take pictures if you choose. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Officer Adaisa. Officer Dominguez. <laughs> Officer Campos. Officer Lozoya. <laughs> Officer Ortega. Officer Madrid. <laughs> Officer Perry. Officer Minus. <laughs> Officer Dominguez. One more round of applause. Congratulations, guys. Proud of you.
Um, I also want you guys to know that we are still there, me and Sergeant Puentes, Sergeant Bilio. If you guys need anything, you have any questions, you could always go back up to the training room to ask us or talk with us or whatever you guys need, we're there for you guys. We, I am still going to be monitoring you guys through the FTO program, so you guys will probably still be seeing me a lot. I will be talking with you a lot, so, but anything, even when you're um, here 10 years from now, I hope I'm not here 10 years from now, I hope I'm retired, but if you want to call me in 10 years, that's cool, I'll still help you all that I can. <laughs> all right, good, again, okay. good job, thank you guys. I want to reiterate and again thank the family and friends, families and friends of these individuals over here um, for your support, not only through the hiring process, the academy, but especially and much more importantly as they embark on their new careers, they're going to need a lot of your support. So thank you. At this time, I'd like everyone to please rise for the retiring of the colors. Well, that concludes this morning's ceremony. Thank you again, all of you, for being here. Um, please go celebrate and enjoy the time with your loved ones. Thank you. <laughs>